everybody, I'm Tyler. And I'm Brian. And we've been talking about in some previous episodes about different cleaning methods and sticks and cleaners and such, but one thing we haven't touched on yet was uh, using solvents versus dry cleaning. And as somebody who deals with us on a day-to-day basis, um, tell us a little bit about what you recommend and what you see most of. Sure. Uh, one of the best ways to actually get anything clean as well as also address the static issues is to use a wet to dry method, right? Anytime you introduce the fluid, it creates that dissipative medium to basically pull off the static charge. But one of the things that happens in the industry is they look at solvents kind of uniformly, and that's not always the right way to look at it. I mean, Tyler, what's the most common cleaning fluid that you see out there all the time? Well, if you were to ask a doctor or my wife or somebody else, probably isopropyl alcohol. Yeah, right? exactly. And if you look, a lot of installers will use isopropyl alcohol, same way with uh, manufacturing. But one of the problems with alcohol is it's hygroscopic, meaning that basically chemically it wants to pull the water molecules in. And so one of the biggest challenges with using an isopropyl alcohol, especially when you use it in Menda bottles and are not sealed, it's constantly pulling the water in, right? And what happens if I clean something with dirty alcohol or alcohol that's been cross-contaminated? I can potentially what? It's more, now you make it more dirty. Yeah. And so in that case, that's, again, kind of bring back the point that you always want to go through and inspect, clean, and reinspect. You should never assume that any method is always 100% from a cleaning perspective. But one of the best things that you can do is actually start picking some of the engineered cleaning fluids that are out there. Mm-hmm. And a number of manufacturers, we have processes that we can actually recommend depending on the type of connector. But not all, not all cleaning fluids out there are appropriate for cleaning. For example, if you're dealing with things like plastic fiber, uh, if you're dealing with some of the, some of the more aggressive uh, cleaning agents that are out there, they can cause deformation in the plastics. And that can be very detrimental, right? Yeah, sure. So one thing, I mean, we hear a lot of your typical field connect, uh, technicians right now, they, like you were saying, they may go overboard on always doing uh, solvent cleaning when they may not need to. But uh, a common one right now, especially in a troubleshooting environment, of course, you should, normally you should be inspecting proactively. And if you find contamination, if it's dirty, uh, you clean it. Probably a dry clean is probably sufficient. Mm-hmm. And then you inspect it again, and you're good to go. But let's say you're in a troubleshooting environment and you found some, some problems and you need to do some kind of a wet to dry process. Can you expand a little bit more on what a good wet to dry process looks sure like. absolutely the best thing that you'd want to do is apply just a small amount of the cleaning fluid onto a wipe whether it's an optical grade wipe or whether it's even like a cassette or something like that and even if you're going to do a wet to dry with a clicker what you always want to do is use a small amount so you always want to try to meter how much you uh, the cleaning fluid you use you don't ever want to use too much for two reasons. A, it's wasteful. And then second, sometimes too, it can actually get into other parts, like uh, back into the cable assembly, into mm-hmm. where the air mid is, and start wicking out and actually cause problems. So you always want to make sure you just use just a little bit of the cleaning fluid. Tyler, the other thing too, also you need to think about the environment that you're in, right? So there's some people out there that have these uh, DI water-based uh, cl- uh, cleaning solvents out there, and they work well, let's say, in a lab environment that's nice and controlled. But what happens if I leave... Uh, something that's water-based in the truck overnight, and I'm in Minnesota in January. <laughs> yeah, it's going to freeze, freeze, right? The next day. So again, what you want to do is make sure you kind of think about the environment as well as the contaminants that you have on there. But whatever you do, it's always, again, it's important to make sure that you're inspecting the end face, clean it. But then once you clean it, you always want to go back and reinspect. Yeah, make sure it's clean. So again, what do you guys like to u- use? We'd like to hear from you. Uh, send us uh, your responses. Until next time, I'm Tyler. And I'm Brian. Brian.